Okay, we just arrived to Cabo, and right after we got out of security, we were met by this bar. Alright, so this, this is why you don't come to Cabo during the rainy season. I don't think the camera can show how bad it is, because it never shows how bad rain is, but it is really bad right now. So we came to Cabo in September which is the tail end of the rainy season that generally runs from May to September. But they only get an average of about 7 inches of annual rainfall, and that's usually just in a few storms. So unfortunately, we were unlucky to arrive during one of these storms. But we had no idea what was waiting for us at the end of the week. Hey, continues to increase in strength. Off to the west of Cabo San Lucas as a category two. Wreaking havoc on Mexico's Pacific coast, tearing through beach resorts, littering streets with rubble as severe wind, intense rain, and flash flooding make their way towards Baja. This is what it's like here when a hurricane passes by. So definitely don't come in September or you can get stuck inside. We're gonna be inside for about three days while the hurricane passes. Crazy winds, it's raining sideways. We just hope our roof doesn't get blown off. Thankfully, our trip wasn't all bad weather, and we actually had a few good days to explore everything Cabo had to offer. Cabo is located on the southernmost tip of the Baja California Peninsula, and refers to the area from Cabo San Lucas to San Jose del Cabo, also known as the Los Cabos Corridor. During our trip, we stayed in Cabo San Lucas, in a villa at the Los Cabos Golf Resort. The resort was nice and quiet, as it was located right next to the golf course. Also, we were only a 10 minute drive from downtown Cabo and the beach, so it was convenient as well. It had everything you need. A couple pools, restaurant, bar, and of course golf. But you can't spend your whole trip at the resort, so we headed out to see what Cabo San Lucas had to offer. The main area to see in the city is the marina area. There's a mall here, boardwalk, lots of souvenir shops, and tons of restaurants with great food. Also, El Medino Beach is right nearby if you want to just hang out on the beach and take in the view. But probably the best activity you can do while here is take a glass bottom boat tour. If you even spend 5 minutes in the marina area, you will most definitely be approached by numerous street salesmen trying to sell you this tour. We would recommend ignoring all of them. Their glass bottom boat tour is just a small two foot section of glass in the center of a boat you can look through. These are okay, but if you want the best experience, you need to go here. Ambitors was the only company we found that has an actual glass bottom boat. Okay, well it's more like plastic, but it's completely transparent. The tours are a bit more expensive than the others, costing around $39 a person for a 45 minute tour out to the famous arch El Arco. But it's so worth it to go. I mean... Check it out for yourself. So a couple of tips for this tour. First, make sure to sit in the front of the boat on the starboard side, since everything interesting to see is on the left of the boat. Also, they give you time by the arch for pictures. Just make sure to take a bunch of your own. The guide will be taking pictures of you during the whole trip, but will charge you around $100 at the end to keep them. So if you don't want to pay, just take your own. But overall, one of these rides is a must-go experience. After a long day of walking and sightseeing, we decided to come here. So there's tons of restaurants all over Cabo, but Los Tres Gallos was our favorite. The overall atmosphere and look of this restaurant gives you a nice and relaxed Mexican vibe. There's live music on display while you eat. And the food is so good. Our biggest recommendation is to order the Caesar salad, as they make their homemade dressing salad right at your table. This is a great place just to chill and relax while having some great food. <laughs> Today we decided to make our way to San Jose del Cabo, and on our way there, check out the beaches along the tourist corridor. 
As you can see, there are quite a few of them along the 20 mile stretch between the cities. Our first stop was at Chileno Bay Beach. One thing to be aware of for a lot of the beaches in the Cabo area is that they can have some strong riptides, so it can be difficult to find a nice, calm swimming spot. And Chileno was no exception to this, but still a nice place to just relax on the beach and splash on the shore a bit. San Jose del Cabo definitely has a different atmosphere. Where Cabo San Lucas is more busy and party centered, here it's more laid back and has a lot more to explore. The central square, Plaza Mijares, is a great place to go if you're interested in exploring museums and learning the area's history. Or if you're into architecture like I am, you should go and check out the San Jose del Cabo church, which stands right at the top of the plaza. There are also a lot of little shops to explore in the area, or you can watch the waves down the street at Costa Azul Beach. There's a little bit of everything here, so it's definitely worth the stop. For our last day of sunshine before the hurricane hit, we decided to drive up north to Tecolote Beach. Tecolote Beach is located about a two and a half hour drive from Cabo San Lucas, and it sits on the Sea of Cortez. This beach was amazing. The water was emerald blue and very calm, the beach was long and the sand was soft. The water was nice and warm too, so you could just lounge in it for hours and even take a little nap. There was food and drinks right on the beach, and also some live entertainment. This beach, or its nearby neighbor Bolandra Beach, are the best places to go for an amazing beach day. And I can think of no better way to end a trip to Cabo and the beach than by enjoying some street tacos and watching the beautiful sunset. Our trip to Cabo was full of surprises. Driving through a flood right after we arrived, exploring the cities and the beautiful ocean, finding some great food, experiencing a new culture, and surviving a hurricane. We enjoyed our time in Cabo and hope you can visit as well. But most importantly, just get out of your house and go somewhere. Make some memories. If you enjoyed watching this video and would like to see more of our family trips, make sure to subscribe. Also be sure to check out these videos of our trips to Puerto Rico and Croatia, and stay tuned for more adventures to come.